Hello there, grade and students. Today, we're going to have another adventure. And I can't wait to witness how awesome you would be. This is Teacher Zekaina, your companion to your science exploration. To start with, these are some reminders and the rules to follow while indulging in some screen time. First, find a nice and quiet place so you can be relaxed and be more focused in our lesson. Number two, sit properly. Make sure that your back should be touching the seat back rest. Number three, you have to prepare your papers and pen. This will serve as your tool for taking notes and also in answering the learning tasks. Number four, listen attentively and carefully in each instructions. And lastly, number five, don't forget to enjoy and have fun while learning. I know that you are all ready and excited. Now let's begin. have been on this planet far longer than we have. They go by many names. Dave, Carl, Paul, Mike. Oh, that one is Norbert. He's an idiot. They're all different, but they all share the same goals. To serve the most despicable master they could find. Making their master happy was the tribe's very reason for existence. Well, that's not to say that they didn't have other passions. Finding a boss was easy. But keeping a boss, therein lies the rub. <laughs>
Nope, it wasn't easy for these guys, but they never gave up. With the emergence of the Stone Age came the rise of a new species. Man was very different from the dinosaur. He was shorter, hairier, and way, way smarter. The minions took an instant liking to man and helped him the best they could. Poor man, so trusting, so fragile, so, so delicious. Their quest for a boss put the minions front and center for some of civilization's most historic moments. Ancient Egypt held great promise. But it didn't last long. They bounced from one evil boss to another, but they never seemed to find their perfect fit. One particular employer took their failure very, very badly. Now that you have watched the video, let us answer the following questions. What was the video all about? Good job! It's all about the origin of the minions. For the second question, what happened to the main characters in the movie? Great! The main characters change as they adapt to their environment. And for the third question, is it a fiction or a non-fiction? Correct. Fiction. Based on your English class, you have learned that when you say fiction, these are the stories based on imagination. And when we say non-fiction, this refers to the factual stories. And now, for the final question. Based on the movie clip you have watched, what do you think is our topic today? Exactly. In today's lesson, we will go through the theories of evolution. Congratulations, we did it. Our time machine is now activated. And we can now travel back at a time where scientists explain the occurrence of evolution. Are you ready? Let's go. According to Lamarck, snakes were sea creatures and originally have limbs to swim. When the shortage of food happened underwater, 
they tend to go to the land to search for other sources of food. And because they do not know how to use their limbs, they used to crawl to go to one place to another. Their limbs were useless, so it disappeared through time. The second assumption of Lamarck, the theory of acquired characteristics, he said that parents acquired characteristics will pass and inherit by the offspring in the next generation. And he used giraffe as an example. Let's take a look of the evolution of giraffe's neck according to Lamarck. Lamarck believed that giraffes before have short necks. But because of the need to survive and in order to reach tall trees for food, they kept stretching their necks until these become longer and be able to reach tall trees. These acquired characteristics were believed to be inherited by their offspring and propagated by the next generation of giraffes. Do you think Lamarck's theory was accepted? Very good, it's a no. Many scientists rejected his theories and proven that this was wrong. According to them, phenotypic changes acquired during an organism's lifetime can it pass on to the next generation. For example, if your father is emascular, does it mean after your birth you will also be a muscular? Therefore, even if giraffes use their necks frequently, they will not pass their acquired long neck trait to their offspring. Remember, acquired characteristics cannot be inherited. Fifty years later, after Lamarck's theory, another man named Charles Darwin. He is a naturalist who lived between 1809 to 1882. He proposed the theory of natural selection. Darwin's theory is quite different from Lamarck's theory. A while ago, we tackled about Lamarck's idea that an organism changes during its life in order to adapt to its environment. These changes are passed on to its offspring. Now, let us know and understand the idea of natural selection by Charles Darwin. Eighteen thirty five in Galapagos Island. Young English naturalist Charles Darwin collects plants and animal specimens for study. His observation on this island will be fundamental in formulation of his theories, which many years later will be published with his great work on the origin of species. A revolutionary book that changed the way biology was understood, giving rise to the new scientific theories. In this book, Darwin laid down the scientific principle that each species had not always been the way we know it today, rather, each one had changed over time. He explained that natural selection is a process behind evolution. Charles Darwin developed his theories after his adventures upon HMS Beagle. In his travels, he observed that creatures found in the island he visited were similar to the ones found in the mainland but appeared to be slightly different. It wasn't until he returned home that he came up to the conclusion that species are specially modified to their environments. That's why they differ. He develops four conditions explaining why this happens. Here are the four main principles of Darwin's theory of natural selection. Condition number one. Individuals within a population differ. It's what we call variation. There are features that differ within populations of the same animal. In our case, the features that varies between our giraffes is neck length. Some giraffes were born with long necks. Some were born with short necks. Condition number two. The differences are, at least in part, passed from parents to offspring. Darwin's descent of modification is the idea that offsprings are fairly similar to their parents with some genetic differences. 
Condition number three. Some individuals are more successful at surviving and reproducing than others. In case of our giraffe, the long neck individual did not acquire its neck to grab the leaves. Instead, individuals within the population were born the neck length that was longer than others. Because the long neck allowed them to reach the food that was otherwise unattainable, it gave them an advantage. Condition number four. The successful individuals succeed because of variant traits they have inherited and will pass on to their offspring. Giraffe with longer neck advantage are in better health and able to pass this fixture to their offspring. Because this trait is more successful than shorter neck, more individuals in the population have it. Over time, this process can result in populations that specialize for particular environments and may eventually result in emergence of new species. Now, to further understand your lesson, let's do this learning task. In this activity, you have to prepare your paper and pen. For the instruction, in this activity, you have to find and look for seven vocabulary words that you have learned from this lesson and answer the questions that follows. You only have 60 seconds to complete the task. I know that it's a bit tricky, but I know you can do it. Trust yourself, class. Are you ready? Your timer starts now. Charles Darwin. Good job! He is a naturalist who proposed the theory of natural selection. Next, what is adaptation? Great! It is an ability to adjust in the environment. Last, what is variation? You got it! It refers to the differences of individuals within a population. You did great, Brayden! Awesome! Now let's have a short recap.